بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is unit 4 reading unit for reading so we'll be doing lots of reading and listening today and answering questions about what we will read but before we do that remember on our previous uh, lesson we learned some words that we will face today like a genetic with goes with the letter E related to the part of the cell that contains your parents characteristics it means related to genes from the word itself genetics goes with genes the genes of your parents treatable Treatable uh, goes with the letter F, capable of being cured, curable, for example. Diagnosis goes with the letter G, identification of the cause of the problem. So diagnosis is to identify the cause of this problem. Undergo goes with the letter H, experience, inherited with uh, D, received from a parent or an ancestor, uh, preventative with C, done in order to avoid avoid prevent avoid so it's almost the same and uh, controversial causing disagreement when something is uh, when they say something uh, is controversial it it means that many people have different opinions different views about causing disagreement between uh, people the last one is potential the possibility of being something or the possibility of doing something and of course, we'll see them in these places today in this lesson in the article. So the objectives to discuss genetic diseases, explain reading strategy, reading for a purpose, answer questions about the text. So the reading strategy is a reading for a purpose. It means to read, to find out information about something. For example, when uh, if, you're one, if you're one of your friends is uh, sick in his eyes or in his heart, and you read some articles online to try to come out with information that might help your friend, this is reading for a purpose. You have a purpose to read something. So sometimes it's easy to forget that there's a real purpose for reading beyond that of doing exercises in a book. So we don't just read to do exercises and answer questions. Sometimes we read for a specific goal, lo looking for information to use this information in uh, other places other than uh, having an exercise and answering uh, questions. So this is the before reading, read the article and underline all the potential diseases that can be identified using the uh, using genetic testing. So jumping on to the reading article here, peeking into our medical future, peeking. What does it mean to peek? Peeking. Yes, it means to look without anyone noticing you. To peek, it means to look without anyone uh, noticing you. Peeking into the future, on, uh, peeking into our medical future. I think from the title, you can know what the article is going to talk about. The future of the uh, medicine department. Peeking into our medical uh, future. So let's listen to the article together. Then we will be answering some questions. Let's listen. Did you know that a drop of your blood can predict diseases you may develop in the future? This is possible through genetic testing, testing that analyzes the genetic information found in the cells of your body. Each cell contains a sample of DNA. The information in DNA can help determine a person's risk of developing certain diseases years from now. The most common type of genetic testing is called newborn screening. The goal of newborn screening is to identify treatable genetic disorders in newborn babies. In many countries, infants are screened in the hospital shortly after they are born. Although it is rare to find that a baby has a genetic disorder, those that do have a disorder start receiving treatment right away. This early diagnosis and treatment prevents physical and mental problems, and sometimes even death. Another type of genetic testing is called predictive gene testing. This is used to predict an adult's risk of developing certain diseases later in life. People who undergo this type of genetic testing are usually from a family in which many members have had a particular inherited disease, like certain cancers or Alzheimer's disease. There are many obvious benefits to this kind of testing. 
A negative test, a test that says a person is not likely to develop a disorder, can bring a tremendous sense of relief. Jen Thompson, who recently underwent predictive gene testing for colon cancer, explains, So many people in my family died of colon cancer, I worried constantly. When the test came back negative, I felt as if someone had lifted an enormous weight off my shoulders. A positive test has benefits as well. It warns of the need for preventative care, like frequent checkups, dietary changes, medicines, or even the option of surgically removing the part likely to develop the disease. For example, if Thompson's test had been positive, she might have chosen to have her colon removed. There are also some controversial downsides to genetic testing. The value of genetic testing is particularly questionable when testing for a disease that is untreatable. For example, Alzheimer's disease runs in an Lee's family. Anne has decided to get genetic testing to see if she is likely to develop it. Her husband Bao is not happy about her choice. Bao explains, if the result is positive, how will it help to know that she will probably develop the disease? If I had the Alzheimer's gene, I wouldn't want to know. Another issue is that even if someone tests positive for a disease, it doesn't mean that they will definitely develop the disease. So a person could spend years worrying about something that never ends up happening. Genetic testing has the potential to impact millions of lives in the future. Many are excited about the future of genetics, while others have deep concerns about it. But for better or for worse, soon we may all have the ability to peek into our medical future. Yes, we might have to. Uh, we might have a peek into our uh, medical future, and thanks to God, thank God that our uh, uh, me medicine here is developing day by day. So here we have vocabulary practice. Notice this word: treatable, untreatable. Tre if you remember the word treatable, yes, being able to be uh, cured, treatable, and the opposite is untreatable. What word do you see the main part of each word? What's the main word of each word? What's the main part? Treatable, untreatable. What's the main part of the words here? It's the verb. Yes, it's the verb treat. So the original verb is treat. This is treatable. Notice the uh, affix here. And untreatable, the prefix also, un, uh, untreatable. When referring to disease, treat means to take care of a person with the disease and try to cure it. So we, when we refer to a disease, the word or the verb treat means to take care of a person with the disease and try to cure it. So it's almost as the same meaning as the verb cure treat and cure, to treat this illness, to treat this uh, uh, condition, it's this almost the same meaning as to cure it, to have a cure uh, for it. Continuing the vocabulary practice here, what do treatable and untreatable mean? The words treatable and untreatable, do you know what they mean? So let's check the answer here together. Treatable means that a disease can be cured. Treatable, treatable, can be cured or treated. Untreatable means that it can't be. So treatable means the disease can be cured or can be treated. Untreatable, un here, it means that, of course, it can't be, it can't be cured or it can't be treatable. So the suffixes A-B-L-E and I-B-L-E usually mean that something is possible. Unlike the prefix un means not. So the suffix A-B-L-E and I-B-L-E usually means that uh, something is possible. It's possible to do it, uh, treatable on something like that. But the prefix un, it means not untreatable, uh, unhappy, and so on. So try to guess the meaning of the words. Try to guess the meaning of these words. Preventable. What does it mean, preventable? 
If you remember the word prevent, what does it mean, preventable? Yes, describe something that can be prevented, can be prevented. Predictable, so predictable. Yes, very good. Describe something that can be predicted, something that can be predicted. Questionable, questionable. So, is it the same meaning or different? Questionable, let's see the answer here. Describe something that is doubtful. So, when you, see, when you describe something as questionable, it means that you doubt it, doubtful. You can question it. Um, eg uh, excitable, so excitable, something who can uh, describe someone who can easily become excited. Irresistible, irresistible, what does it mean? If you break it here, the original word is resist here, and then we have resistible, then we have the prefix IR, irresistible. So we have three parts here, the prefix IR, then the word resist, and I-B-L-E. So what does it mean when someone is irresistible or something is irresistible? Something that you can that can't be resisted. Something that you can't resist. For example, you say this burger is irresistible. I can't resist it. I can't resist it. I have to eat it because it's very delicious. For example, so here we have the after reading questions. We have uh, true or false, of course. We have five questions of true or false. To get a sample of DNA, doctors must draw a large quantity of blood. Newborn screening is not a common type of genetic testing. Uh, predictive gene testing can be done for treatable and untreatable disorders. A positive test generally brings great relief to the test taker. Number five, if someone tests positive for a disease, they will definitely develop the disease. So we have five true or false uh, question, but before we answer them, let's read the article again, just to make sure that we have the correct answers. So let's listen. Did you know that a drop of your blood can predict diseases you may develop in the future? This is possible through genetic testing, testing that analyzes the genetic information found in the cells of your body. Each cell contains a sample of DNA. The information in DNA can help determine a person's risk of developing certain diseases years from now. The most common type of genetic testing is called newborn screening. The goal of newborn screening is to identify treatable genetic disorders in newborn babies. In many countries, infants are screened in the hospital shortly after they are born. Although it is rare to find that a baby has a genetic disorder, those that do have a disorder start receiving treatment right away. This early diagnosis and treatment prevents physical and mental problems, and sometimes even death. Another type of genetic testing is called predictive gene testing. This is used to predict an adult's risk of developing certain diseases later in life. People who undergo this type of genetic testing are usually from a family in which many members have had a particular inherited disease, like certain cancers or Alzheimer's disease. There are many obvious benefits to this kind of testing. A negative test, a test that says a person is not likely to develop a disorder, can bring a tremendous sense of relief. Jen Thompson, who recently underwent predictive gene testing for colon cancer, explains, So many people in my family died of colon cancer, I worried constantly. When the test came back negative, I felt as if someone had lifted an enormous weight off my shoulders. A positive test has benefits as well. It warns of the need for preventative care, like frequent checkups, dietary changes, medicines, or even the option of surgically removing the part likely to develop the disease. For example, if Thompson's test had been positive, she might have chosen to have her colon removed. There are also some controversial downsides to genetic testing. The value of genetic testing is particularly questionable when testing for a disease that is untreatable. For example, Alzheimer's disease runs in an Lee's family. 
and has decided to get genetic testing to see if she is likely to develop it. Her husband Bao is not happy about her choice. Bao explains, if the result is positive, how will it help to know that she will probably develop the disease? If I had the Alzheimer's gene, I wouldn't want to know. Another issue is that even if someone tests positive for a disease, it doesn't mean that they will definitely develop the disease. So a person could spend years worrying about something that never ends up happening. Genetic testing has the potential to impact millions of lives in the future. Many are excited about the future of genetics, while others have deep concerns about it. But for better or for worse, soon we may all have the ability to peek into our medical future. So now that we have read and listened to the article again, let's jump to the true or false questions. Number one, to get, number one here, answer true or false, to get a sample of DNA, doctors must draw a large quantity of blood. So to get a DNA, doctors must draw Draw, it means when you, they put in the needle here and they draw the blood, they take it from your body. They, they have to draw a large amount of blood, again, to get a sample of DNA. Doctors must draw a large quantity of blood. Is this true or false? So number one is false. They don't have to take a large or draw a large uh, uh, quantity of blood, just a few drops is enough. Number two, new, uh, newborn screening is not a common type of genetic testing. Num uh, number two, newborn screening is not a common type of genetic testing. Is this true or false? Newborn screening is not a common type of genetic testing, so the answer is also false. Number three, predicted, uh, number three uh, predictive gene testing can be done for treatable and untreatable disorders. Again, predictive gene testing can be done for both treatable and untreatable disorders. So is this true or false? The predictive gene testing, predictive gene testing can be done for both of them, for the treatable and also the untreatable disorders. So number three is true, that's correct. Number four, a positive test generally brings great relief to the test taker. Number four, a positive test generally brings a great relief to the test taker. So when the test is positive, does this give you relief? When you, uh, when you test for something and they say it's positive, does this give you relief or not? So again, read this carefully. A positive test generally brings great relief to test taker. Is this true or false? So it's false. It's better to have negative. When you test for something, it's what gives you relief is if it is negative, not positive. Because if you test, because if you test for something and it is positive, it means that you have it. If you test for a disease or for some illness and the test is positive, it means that you have this uh, disease. Last one here, if someone tests positive for a disease, they will definitely develop the uh, disease. So if it's test positive for disease, they will definitely develop the disease. So this one is false and with that we reach the end of this lesson see you next lesson insha'Allah subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu anna la la anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk assalamu alaikum